What's up DJs? I'm guessing you want to learn how to create drops like this. That's right, in this video, I'm gonna show you three mixing techniques to help you make drop switch ups like this. So there are some things we need to get used to preparing and performing when it comes to drop mixing like this, especially with drum and bass. Let's get stuck into it. To really nail down double drops like this and the ones I'm gonna show you in this video, the few things you need to get familiar with is preparing your music and in particular setting up some hot cues or cue points. So it doesn't matter what equipment you've got or what software you use. Here we're using Rekordbox and the Flex 10, but it doesn't matter. All we need to do is find the drop of the track first of all. So we're gonna go on this machete track and skip towards the drop. We then pause the track on the drop and we're going to locate the beat jump feature and it's found on nearly every piece of DJ software or hardware. For example, on the Flex 10 here, I can hold shift and 16 beat jump backwards using these two buttons. If you can't find it on your hardware, there'll be a setting within the software, just like here in Record Box, we can go down to beat jump and then we can show different parameters like this 16 beats. Now I'd recommend jumping back probably 32 beats. So if I do 16 twice, you'll see I've then set up a hot cue on this position. We then replicate that on the next song. And what this is doing is it's setting markers, visual points, but also points to work from that we can set the track off to line the drops up. So as you can see, I've done the same thing on the opposite side. Located the drop, 16 beats twice, making 32 beats backwards, set up a hot cue. Now, if I set both of these tracks off at the same, same BPM and same time, they will both line up together at the drop. So then all Cross is doing with this technique is doing a drop switch. So we're actually sampling different parts of the drop of the two different tracks. So to do this in practice, we'd simply be playing this track. We would have mixed it in from something else. And visually when it gets to that A hot cue marker, we're going to set off the other side. The fader's down at this point, and we're just gonna mix it in at the last second. At that point, just get your beat matching right, using those 32 beats to do it. And then we're gonna swap the up faders, and then back again, and then back again. And you could be counting along in eights or in fours and swapping over between the two every four or eight beats. Quite nice to sample the last four beats of a phrase and then back again. And you can get creative with this. Obviously, it catches the crowd out because you're dropping the next track in perfectly when it should drop in, but instead you're giving them something fresh and new and it creates that energy and excitement. So that's technique one. There's another way of double dropping. Let's take a quick look at this clip of Serum. Yo, Serum! Right, so come on and fix some hair, some energy! I might just get so if you don't hear me, I'm stormy! Badadan, 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 man from me, man. So what Serum's done here is taken a big tune, Badadan, that everyone knows, and created a double drop. But this time, instead of switching using the up faders or the cross fader to just swap to the next drop, it's a layered double drop. So both tracks are playing at the same time. So there's a few extra things to think about here. When you're making your own double drops in this way, we need tracks that work in key with each other. That's very important. We also need to think about the EQing as well because there's a lot going on with two tracks being played, the drop sections at the same time. So we need to do a bit of EQing. The preparation is still the same. We set the hot cues 32 beats before the drop. If that works for you, gives you enough time to make sure that your tracks are aligned. And then it's just a case of mixing in just at the last moment, but EQing and making sure that there's some balance between what's going on in the music. You need one song as the lead bass line, ideally. Let's take a listen. So if we've got these two 
tracks working now. We've got Badadan going. It'd be building up. I'd take the low end out of Badadan and then slam in the opposite side. And then this is where, depending on the song, you might want to highlight some of the mid range and drop it down on the opposite side to get the Badadan vocal to stand out. And you can just let them run together. And the reason why this works is because they work in key with each other and they, that gels them together. Now to determine if they work in key, in Record Box, for example, you can see it says 4A right here and 4A right here, which means they are produced in the exact same key, which means that they will harmonically work well together. Now, if you want to learn more about mixing in key, how to beat match, how to get in time, especially with drum and bass, check out our drum and bass beginner DJ course or the pro bundle, which comes with everything from beginner to pro level techniques, just like this. Let's get stuck into the last technique. The next step in drop mixing, particularly in the drum and bass scene, is basically combining what both DJs have done. So we're going to use up to four decks, and you'll see this happen quite a lot, especially in the scene. There's a bit more preparation going in, so I'm going to use the exact same tracks, but put all four onto the four decks. Now, because I've got two layers here with a controller, I'm going to add a bit of extra preparation. Because I can't set all four tracks off at the same time, if I go onto my deck three and deck four, I've then set hot cues just literally on the drop. Because then I can set them both off on the drop. And we're going to do a bit of a combination of just layering two tracks together and then switching out what that other supporting baseline is between the other two. And we can get experimental with this, but the main thing to remember is keep the structure of the music. We're not just randomly adding things in and out. So count along in your head. Maybe every four beats you're adding something different in, but we're going to have the main theme of Badadan running throughout. So let's take a listen to what this could sound like. And then we can simply mix out of Badadan and just let that machete track play. So it's all about getting that timing right, getting the tracks lined up. If you have four CDJs, then you can still stick to having a 16 or 32 beat lead in because you've got each deck independent to each other and there's a bit more control. But that's taking the drop mixing to that next level where we're going to use three or four decks. And you can really experiment, just make sure the tracks working key with each other, and you just get that timing right between the four decks. If you enjoyed this and want to learn more drum and bass mixing techniques, make sure to check out our Drum and Bass Pro DJ course. Thanks for watching. Make sure to watch this video next, where you can get some more inspiration for your next drum and bass mix. See you again soon.